Hello everyone, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this particular video, we will talk about this latest update which came from AWS about single sign-on. So, uh, as you can see on the screen, AWS now started supporting customer managed policies with AWS SSO permission sets, right? I wanted to explain it a bit visually that uh, if you want to go ahead and use this feature, of course, it's a great feature. It has a lot of advantages. But if you want to go ahead and use it, what are those few things which you should keep in mind and how should you go ahead and design this in your organization? OK, so we will talk about that. I'm hoping that if you're watching this video, you have clarity about SSO permission sets, uh, permissions boundary, different types of policies, etc. If uh, you are not clear on any of those things, uh, there are a couple of videos on our channel which you can go ahead and watch. I'll just leave the links in the description so you can watch it if you like. Uh, but it's very important that you have a clear understanding of those concepts. And if you have never actually have done the setup of SSO you know, in your account, then I would highly recommend that go ahead and do it. Uh, that will give you a lot of clarity. Okay, so let's try and understand what this update says. This update says that the new capability helps AWS SSO customers to improve their security posture by creating larger and finer grained policies for least privilege access. Point is, earlier, if you remember, when we used to create permission sets, there were only two things which were possible. It was possible to use only the AWS managed policies or the policies which we used to write, like we used to type it. I've shown it in my SSO video as well, right? So only those two things were possible. Now, additionally, in addition to that, it is also possible to go ahead and specify the name of a customer managed policy, right? So basically, a policy which you have written in within your IAM dashboard, right? That policy can be specified while creating the permission set right now um, there are few advantages of that right of course uh, because it is possible that let's say you want to write a particular policy and you want to use those statements across two or three different permission sets so earlier it was not possible i mean we had to like kind of type that thing again and again in in all the three permission sets but now it is possible you write it as a customer managed policy and then just use that customer managed policy name in all the three permission sets right so that is one good thing and let's say later on if you go ahead and uh, modify that particular cmp then automatically that effect comes in all the three permission sets so that reusability part is there of course but there is one very important thing to understand that where would these or or where would this customer managed policy exist it may be confusing a bit if you are doing it for the first time, but this customer managed policy should be there in the member account, not in the master account. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah. And that is something which I want to explain it to you with a kind of diagram so that you understand it clearly. Okay. So before we go there, just one additional thing, which is kind of advantageous after this update is that earlier when customer managed policy was not supported, what used to happen was whatever custom we wanted to write, we had to type it as part of permission set. And because that goes as an inline policy as part of the role, there was this limitation of 10,000 characters, right? So you cannot write it like really, really big. No, that won't, that was not possible. Now, uh, with this inclusion of customer managed policy, what we could do is we can go ahead and add up to 10 CMP and of course one permission boundary, right? And each and every uh, CMP can be up to 6,000 characters long. So kind of you get opportunity to write even longer or, you know, a bigger, more fine grained policies with this update, right? So if it is making sense till this point, then that means you have understanding of SSO already. So now we'll go ahead and look at this with a diagram to try and understand what we're talking and what are those important design considerations which you should keep in mind. If some of these things are not making sense to you, 
then you should go ahead and watch the SSO video completely. Okay. I have created a simple diagram here for you to understand. There's a lot of text, but don't worry about it. Uh, you know, I should be able to explain it to you in a really easy manner. On the left hand side, you can see we have our master or management account, right? And of course, in the master or management account only, your SSO would be set up. So let's say here our SSO is set up. And of course, as part of SSO, you will write all the necessary permission sets, right? Clear. Now, what happens is when you actually provision this permission set in a particular member account, what happens internally, right? So first of all, what you will do as part of SSO is you will select, let's say, a particular AWS account, right? It Like it would be a member account. So you'll select an AWS account, then you will select a permission set and you will select a user or group, right? These three things you select and you press provision or submit, whatever, right? So what happens because of that is whatever you have, you know, whatever you have written as part of permission set, whatever policies you had written as part of the permission set, those policies are used and an IAM role gets provisioned in the member account, right? That's what happens. And whatever, whatever user you had selected here, that particular user would be trusted to assume this IAM role, which gets created in the member account, right? This is what happens. Now, let's try and understand what all permission set consists of. A permission set can have AWS managed IAM policy, for example, pre-written policies like read-only access, EC2 full access, those type of things, right? And then an inline policy, something which we used to type it, right? So earlier, only this one and two, these two things were supported. Now, with this update, two additional things are also supported. We can go ahead and specify the name of a customer managed policy, right? Which we are not typing as part of SSO. We maintain it as part of IAM, but we can specify its name. Number four is permissions boundary. We can also specify uh, the name of an IAM policy, which will be attached to this IAM role as a permissions boundary. Okay. So these two things are new. So let's say when you press provision in your AWS SSO on the right hand side in the member account, this IAM role got created, right? So what happens? If you have a managed IAM policy, the same managed IAM policy gets attached to this IAM role, right? Now, if you if you want, you can go ahead and check the ARN of, of a managed IAM policy. And you will see that managed IAM policies, ARN, do not have account ID in that, right? Why so? Because the managed policies are of course managed by AWS, right? So they are not specific to a particular account and hence they do not have an account ID, right? So if I have read-only access, read-only access is, is like it is the same content in my master account, it is the same content in my member account or if you go ahead and look in your account, it would be the same content, right? So that's the first thing. Second is inline policy. Now inline policy is something whatever I had typed here manually, right? While, while creating permission set, that gets created as an inline policy and gets attached to this IAM role. And that's where we were discussing that there will be uh, a limit that how big this inline policy can be. So this is what used to happen earlier, right? Whatever content was there, that content used to get, that content used to get copied from the master account, right? We used to write it as part of permission set and that content used to get copied and here, on the right hand side, you are seeing an inline policy used to get created. If later on, let's, uh, you know, let's say I want to change something as part of a particular permission set, when I will go ahead and change it in the master account, and then I'll have to press reprovision to make sure that this inline policy in the member account gets updated. I have shown this in the uh, in my SSO detailed video as well, right? But two new things, which is customer managed policy, right? So whatever name you have specified here, that particular name, SSO will try to search that name in the member account. For example, while creating the permission set, I specify a policy name called, let's say knowledge India EC2 access, right? That's the name of the policy. So that knowledge India EC2 access that policy should exist where it should not exist in the master account it should exist in the member account 
okay it should exist in the member account as an im policy that's important in the same way whatever you specify as permissions boundary that policy should also exist in the member account these two things are very important so what does that mean really it means that if you want to make use of customer managed policy or permissions boundary as part of your permission set then you need to have this planning beforehand that how do i go ahead and provision that particular permissions boundary or uh, you know or that particular cu customer managed policy how do i go ahead and provision these im policies first in the member account how can you go ahead and do that there are there are many mechanisms you can go ahead and write your script and run it in every account or you can use aws cloud formation and run it from the master account right from your organization level basically you can run cloud formation and create such policies in multiple accounts i'll show it to you in a separate video how you can do that okay but you have to ensure that the customer managed policy is already created in the member account if you do not do that i mean suppose if you have missed doing that what will happen is when you press provision in your aws sso it will fail because it will try to search it will try to search for that customer managed policy in the member account but it is not there and hence it will not provision the im role it will fail okay and please remember both of these two things are case sensitive right so just take care of that so i hope that is understandable now that brings us to the last part of this video where we need to understand what are the important design decisions related to this right with this what additional things you need to take care of so the advantage we have already understood what are the advantages that now you can just write it once and of course you can attach multiple customer managed policies all those things are great right uh, but one problem is because these managed policies are there in your member account so someone in your member account can go ahead and modify or delete those policies isn't it it could be possible so you have to ensure that that should not happen right so let's try to understand i have i've written down few things of course first point we have already covered second is ensure that no user or role in the member aws account is able to modify or delete these im policies because that you don't want happen though though these customer managed policies and the permission boundary you know both of these things exist in the member account but practically you do not want that some user or role in the member account should be able to modify it otherwise it beats the whole purpose right uh, it should be done in such a way that only the allowed identity from the master account should be able to create modify or delete these policies right so how can you do that you can achieve this by writing a deny for these in the permissions boundary itself and ensure that ensure to attach the permission boundary always this is first thing which you should do it's not and or or all of this you should do so number one is that as part of this permissions boundary itself you write a deny statement which uh, prohibits a modification or deletion of this customer managed policy and the permissions boundary policy right both of those things and then make sure that this permission boundary is attached to all the users and all the roles that is first thing right the second is uh, ensure that no im user or role creation is possible without attaching the specified permission boundary this part i have already explained you in my permissions boundary video so you have to ensure that any user or role which gets created should always have the permission boundary added so that way that any newly created user or role would not be able to delete the permission boundary uh, and the customer managed policy now that leaves us with one particular user which you can you can still not control right or let's say if uh, somebody uh, in malicious way comes and creates a user then what happens so what you could also do is you can adopt a strategy where you make sure that the customer managed policies and the permission boundary policy which you want to use with your sso you name them in a particular pattern let's say dnd and then name it whatever you like and then you go ahead and write an scp right and attach this scp at the top level right in your organization at the root node you go ahead and attach this 
SCP. So what will happen with that? And in that SCP, you should write a deny statement for the policies which start with DND, right? So you write that way. And this will ensure that, you know, no one, even the root user, right? Even the root user in a, in a member account won't be able to go ahead and let's say modify uh, those customer managed policies and the permissions boundary. So that way you ensure that no leakage happens. Nobody is able to do those actions which you don't want them to do. Uh, this is quite important if you are designing, you know, your IM permissions um, and roles, etc. for a big organization where uh, multiple uh, multiple uh, groups come together and work. There will be a lot of teams. You'll have vendors coming and working for you. In such scenarios, this whole thing works out really, really uh, good. So I hope uh, you learned something from this. And while we are here, I can just show you right quickly in a minute. If you press on create permission set and go to this custom permission set, you will see all these four things. This is what I showed you in the diagram as well. AWS managed policies customer managed policies, inline policy and permission boundary. So in this, if I have to just tell you the order, AWS managed policies and inline policy, these two things were there before. Customer managed policies and permission boundary, these two things are newly added. Just read an important thing here. Customer managed policies are standalone policies that you create and manage in your AWS accounts to define custom permissions. Here, your AWS account, it means the member accounts. You can attach up to 10, this is fine. Customer managed policies are intended for advanced use cases to ensure that you understand your shared security responsibility and best practices for configuring these policies. Review the AWS SSO documentation. So this is the part which I wanted to tell you. So uh, while it opens up the door for you to go ahead and use one of the customer, one or many of the customer managed policies which are there in your member account, but as you start using those policies, the additional burden comes on you, which I told you about, right? That now you have to secure those policies as well. I hope you learned something from this video. This was a bit advanced, but I thought, uh, let me explain this because uh, many of you uh, might be implementing SSO in your organization. And with this, go ahead and make it even better. So if you liked it, um, leave a comment and uh, maybe share it with someone. Uh, we will see you in the next uh, video with uh, another new topic. Take care. Bye-bye.